Dr. Connelly is a role model for excellence and persistence, not only as a scholar and former president of the American Public Health Association, but also as a civil rights leader. When I think of Dr. Cornelli and the many things that he achieved over his lifetime, uh, he, he exuded leadership. And, and in fact, I would say that he was a model of servant leadership. In the 1950s, Dr. Connelly worked tirelessly on the desegregation of health care facilities across the nation to open them up to African-American patients and African-American physicians. Known for fighting for social justice in health care long before the current focus on health equity in public health, Dr. Connelly was a strong advocate for the opportunity for optimal health for all. His leadership activities spanned academic settings, community uh, activities and you know public health and, and healthcare arenas more broadly, but you know on in a whole they all seemed uh, to to serve the needs of the communities and serve future generations through his his training. I embrace a lot of his same philosophies around social determinants and equity, looking out for the person who may not have a voice and needs care just like anyone else. He didn't shy away from criticizing uh, our health, their social support systems that were not fully serving the American public in equitable ways. Your home address is a great predictor of your the chronic disease that you might have and the life expectancy that you will enjoy. Uh, Dr. Uh, Cornelli, uh, a lot of his work was in that space. His legacy at Michigan School of Public Health resulted in the establishment of the Paul B. Connelly Fellowship Program in 1988. This program has trained some of the leading scholars in research on racial and ethnic health disparities. The Center for Research on Ethnicity, Culture, and Health, or CRESH, was established by Dr. Sherman James in 1998. With the vision of Dr. Harold Neighbors, the Cornelli Fellowship Program has been administered by Kresh since 1999. I've lost track of the total number of postdoctoral scholars that we've trained over the years, but I'm sure it's approaching 40 uh, postdocs who have, most of whom have gone on to have stellar uh, academic careers. And uh, I, I actually, I'm sharing with you a picture of the first uh, Cornelli postdoctoral cohort. And there you can see me standing there. Um, my, my hair was black in those days. Uh, so, you know, we've all aged a little bit. That's uh, Dr. Becker and, you know, some of the, the postdoctoral scholars, the three we started with, uh, Tom Leviste, uh, Verna Keith, and Don Smith. Dr. Keith, who's on my left, is now chair of the Department of Sociology at University of Alabama, Birmingham. Dr. Leviste is now a dean at Tulane uh, University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. All of this, I think, is a testament to, uh, you know, the, the kind of barriers that uh, Dr. Cornelli broke through. I did not have any interactions with Dr. Cornelli, unfortunately that would have been a privilege. But I feel like I know him based on the thoughtful considerations that went into establishing the Cornelli Postdoc Fellowship at the school. Also, I grew up in Washington, D.C., near Howard University, where Dr. Cornelli had a tremendous impact on the medical school and the hospital system. I was especially influenced by his research on the health status of African Americans in Washington, D.C., which highlighted a critical need for more research on the health of this population. My research career continues Dr. Cornelli's legacy by focusing on the health and mental health of ethnically diverse black populations. I am grateful to Dr. Cornelli for leading the way in establishing the significance of this research in understanding the nation's health. We have a system in place that's based on an acute care model. You get sick, you go to a hospital, care is provided, you get a bill, and, and his work suggested that if we can keep people well and healthy, they wouldn't need all these other resources, and which are very expensive, they're episodic at best, and if we better understood communities and neighborhoods, and using data analytics, 
we could better understand uh, chronic disease, where it is originating, what we could do about it in the most cost efficient way. How do we get health professionals in place that can manage that situation rather than the complicated model of care that we have today? It's a tremendous privilege and honor to think about creating a space within the School of Public Health uh, that's a physical space. It's a you know it's the primary gathering spot within the uh, within the school, and and name it after uh, an individual who uh, has immense historical significance to the field and to the school of, of of public health directly. I'm very sad that I won't be able to be there in person for the the ceremony, uh, but I'm extremely overjoyed that this is happening, and I want to commend of the students at the School of Public Health who organized and uh, were responsible for making this happen. I think that we are moving in exactly the direction that Dr. Connelly was interested in advocating for over time. So from students, I would, I would suggest that all students look at the history and legacy of Dr. Connelly to understand how he was able to influence not only the field of public health, but also medicine and policy in this country. He's a super inspiring figure. I'm grateful personally for his courage. Uh, I'm, I'm mindful of just the racial climate in the society during the time that Dr. Cornelli led, uh, which had to be uh, immensely challenging. And so I'm grateful for, for his courage and, and his legacy of, of leadership. And he'll continue to be a, you know, a source of inspiration for me. Uh, and I hope that, you know, he serves as a reminder uh, of the importance of server, uh, servant leadership more broadly for the profession.